in this video, declaring unused variables in list comprehensions. So you might be asking, what is an unused variable? Well, let me show you. So let's say we wanted to return a string for i in range 10. When we run this, um, we're getting that string hello 10 times, and this i is never explicitly used. It's an unused variable. So to show you what would happen if I did use it, for contrast, we could create a little tuple with i in our string, and now we have a tuple, we're using that i, um, and that's using the variable. But in our first scenario, i is never used, so that is an unused variable, and there's specific ways that that is handled in Python, and we're gonna get into that in this video. This question of the unused variable in Python is a pretty common one, because we as developers, uh, we wanna be careful of loose ends. And when we look at this unused i, we think, okay, maybe that won't even pass a linter in VS Code or something like that. And this common's actually, this question is actually pretty common. Um, so you'll see in this question, it's, it's the example that I showed you guys before with range. Um, and there's quite a few other questions as well. And I have these tabs because I'm specifically gonna go through them because they, they all um, say something different and something interesting. But just coming back to the shell for a second. So here is our unused variable. And you'll find that other people might literally use the word unused or other people might literally use the word dummy. And that's how we um, identify and show that this is a dummy variable. But what I'll show you instead of the I, what the most common one or what um, some Python developers recommend is to use an underscore. And so obviously it'll work the exact same. And this underscore is just a way to be explicit about our unused variable in Python. And in this first answer where they're asking about range, as I've showed you guys, they say that we often see that the underscore is used instead. So you can see the four underscore in range 10. So that is exactly what I'm doing here. So this is the first thing I wanna to communicate to you guys is that this unused variable i will often be represented as an underscore. Now the next thing I wanna show you guys is what happens when you have two variables. So in this one, um, let's say you have a list of tuples and I'll just, I might as well even just copy this. So we have our list of tuples called some stuff. And this is our list of tuples. And if we wanna put that in a list comprehension, here we have some stuff and we would have a key value uh, situation going on here. And so we can, we can still print hello if we want to, or we can print either our key or our value. And so this is us printing our key. We're printing key and key two, and then this will be us printing our value. And so we should get value and value. So in this case, um, with either the key or with the value, one of them is unused. And if you wanted to be more explicit about that, we can use that underscore again. So we can uh, use our value uh, that we've initiated here. And for the unused variable, we just use our underscore. And you'll see that it works the exact same, but some would argue that we are being more explicit about our unused variable in this situation. And um, I guess in this question, that's what they had seen in the past. They had seen this for loop with the key value where the key was the underscore. And there is some uh, discussion about that as well. Next, I want to show you this Stack Overflow question. And it's, you know, the same kind of thing. What is the purpose of this single underscore variable in Python? And this is probably the best answer I've seen because it kind of walks through uh, the four different ways in which this underscore is used. And if you are going to use this underscore, you should be aware of this answer or the different ways that it's used. So one, and this is cool, is that in the interactive interpreter, which this is, the underscore can be used as a way to uh, redo the result of the last executed expression. And I'll, what, I'll, what I'll do is show you that right now. So all I did was type the underscore and we got that same value again. And I'll just go back to something else. We got hello. And if I do underscore again, we get the hellos again. 
So nothing is assigned to this value or whatever. This is literally something in the interactive shell where it just um, returns the, the value that was last returned previous. See, so before it returned value and then now it returned hello. And I think without even an expression, if I'm just like test, we do that. And if I do underscore, yep, it's gonna return test. So that is how uh, one way in which an underscore is used and that is um, number one here. The second way is using get text and internationalization and you'll kind of see it like this with this underscore kind of preceding a string and this is very common in Django as well. I'm not going to get into it but I guess what I would note is that one of the reasons this underscore isn't used too much um, in this situation and why I've kind of been um, hesitant to say oh this is the right way and I'm more just saying this is a way some people use it is because of this um, this issue with get text and internationalization and there's a little bit of overlap so if you find yourself using this library um, you probably should not use the underscore for your unused variables and then the third and fourth ways are kind of the same thing and it's what we've been talking about here and it's using it as a throwaway variable name um, so that's number three and then four they're kind of using it as a throwaway but in a lambda context so that's what we're talking about here is just using the underscore as a throwaway value so the last one i want to show you guys is this question where they had gone into peter norvig's code and if you don't know who peter norvig is um, you know he works at google pretty big name in the computer science world and they were looking at his code and actually i'll show you first so they were looking at his code and they said, hmm, in Peter Norvig's code, he used uh, the unused variable underscore here. And so people were asking about what that underscore was. And so I clicked on this link and I went to it. And when I looked for that exact code, it's not an underscore anymore. It's an N. So clearly at some point, Peter might have received some feedback and gone back and changed the code such that it is no longer an underscore. And I think that's important to highlight because it kind of says to me, okay, if Peter's not going to use it, if he's actually going to change his code to get rid of it maybe you don't want to use that unused variable either um, but you know at least it's something to be aware of so I forget what the answer is here yeah so people just said oh the underscore is a traditional name for don't care for an unused variable and so that's what we're doing here unused variable we don't care what it's called um, you've seen me use the word dummy or unused and you know you can just replace it with unused and that'll work just fine so what I want you guys to get out of this video is that there are situations where you're going to have an unused variable in your list comprehensions in your loops and in the past a lot of people have used this underscore to denote the unused variable and that was popular convention for a long time but as I've kind of showed you with Peter Norvig's example and you know some of the limitations of this um, using the underscore might not be the best solution but you'll probably still see it in other people's code so now having seen this video you're aware of what's going on you know that it's not some special syntax or something it's literally just an unused variable so you might want to be uh, explicit in a different way and just use dummy or something use a different variable name but at very least, you want to be able to read that underscore and know what it is in other people's code such that, you know, when we have uh, different for loops and things and we have underscores, we know exactly what's going on here and, you know, we're a better Python developer for it. So hopefully this video about unused variables and declaring unused variables was helpful to you. Thanks for watching.